I'm sorry to interrupt the member, but now is the time for members' statements. I recognize the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you to Kathy Moreland, an RN for 40 years, a professor of nursing, and an executive member of RNAO Waterloo Chapter for this letter. And I read, registered nurses in this province have warned the government of the evolving shortfall of RNs for years. Nurses are critical to the functioning of our healthcare system. Throughout the pandemic, nurses have fought to serve and protect Ontarians. They have struggled, worked understaffed, and at times been unsupported while saving our citizens' lives. Many are exhausted, fed up with the lack of compassion, and are leaving for other jurisdictions or careers. More are planning to, and our health care system is heading for collapse if these shortfalls continue. The government has acknowledged registered nurses as the heroes of the pandemic, but has done little to show it. Bill 124 has held nurses' compensation to a 1% annual increase since 2019. It has limited their collective bargaining power and made them work harder for less money than the cost of living increase of 4% this year. This is disrespectful and a kick in the head to our most trusted profession, especially when other regional frontline workers like police and firefighters are getting substantial raises. When will this government recognize that nurses are leaving because they are tired of being disrespected? When will this government realize that losing these nurses will cost us a lot more in the long run than compensating them now? When will this government realize that opening new spots in schools of nursing will not replace the experience or efficiency of those leaving? When will this government repeal Bill 124? Right on. Thank you. Member statements. I recognize the member from Halliburton Court, Lakes Brook. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I rise today in the House to recognize the anniversary of a wonderful holiday tradition in my riding of Halliburton, Kortha Lakes, Brock, and in many communities across the province. Annual Santa Claus parades mark the beginning of the holiday season and are an opportunity for community members to celebrate the spirit of Christmas and join in holiday cheer. As this and this year, the village of Kobaconk is celebrating their 50th annual Santa Claus parade. Santa Claus parades have been spreading joy for over 100 years and, is one, and are one of the world's oldest annual parades. But festive community events like these would not be possible without the fantastic people who run them. So I would like to thank all of the local organizations and volunteers who dedicate so much of their time to ensure this year's holiday parade is not only fun, but also safe for all those involved. We know just how much these annual parades mean to our communities, especially during these uncertain times. I encourage everyone to join in the holiday cheer this Sunday at the 50th annual Santa Claus Parade in Kobaconk, and if you are able, bring with you a donation to the local food bank. I look forward to the many Santa Claus parades in Halliburton, Court Lakes, Brock, yet to come throughout December, and seeing everyone in festive spirit. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. I recognize the member from Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Operating for over 30 years, Hamilton Food Share is Hamilton's emergency food shipping and receiving hub, an emergency food system coordinator for the network of agencies it supports, with a clear mission of working together to towards a hunger-free community. Instead of closing or restricting services over the pandemic, FoodShare has expanded their reach, providing more food resources to 16 member agencies operating 23 emergency food programs, including hot meal and food bank pro programs. They see almost 8,500 visits every month, representing over 12,565 unique individuals residing in 5,500 households. Children make up 36% of Hamiltonians accessing a food bank. Approximately 9,000 households this holiday season will not have enough uh, resources to celebrate the holiday. Hamilton Food Share is changing all of that. Hamilton Food Share and the Emergency Food Network will be distributing 9,000 Christmas hampers throughout Hamilton. This is why they need everyone's support today. This is what the Christmas season is all about. Happy holidays, Hamilton. Let us all remember to keep our neighbours in, in need of uh, top of their mind this holiday season. And if you can, please give to your local food banks. And today, go Cats, go! Thank you. Member Statements. I recognize the member from Markham Unionville. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this summer, I was happy to host a graduation ceremony for Markham Unionville students and their families. 
with the former MP for Markham Unionville, Bob Saraya. In this event, we were also joined by the Minister of Education and YLDSB trustees Alan Tam and Ron Lin. Adhering to public health protocols, the ceremony was hosted outside of Markville Mall, who graciously lent us their space. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many students were not able to attend their graduation this summer. And this event was a great occasion for students to come together, see each other in person, and celebrate one another's achievements. Graduates of all ages, from kindergarten all the way to masters, joined the ceremony as students came up to the stage one by one to receive the premier's scroll and the certificate our office prepared. You could see the joy in the students' and families' faces. Speaker, Ontario is home to the brightest and smartest students in all of Canada. Being able to connect with the graduates and share their ambitions and goals, I know the future of Ontario is bright and is left in their safe hands. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Thunder Bay, Attic Open. Thank you, Speaker. These days, you need identification for almost everything. For many of us, it's something we barely think about. We have identification in our wallets, and we have our birth certificates tucked away safely. Unfortunately, having ready access to identification isn't the case for everyone. Far too many people fall through the cracks, and one of the major barriers is cost. People struggling with other issues in their life, such as being underhoused or having health issues, shouldn't have to worry about spending money on identification. Yesterday, I reintroduced the Awinanin Act, Who Am I Respecting Identity Documents 2021. If passed, it would remove fees for birth certificates, photo ID, and form a committee to address systemic barriers. Everyone needs identification like new parents who have to pay for birth certificates for their child, seniors who can no longer drive and need to get photo ID. Especially in these difficult times, all levels of government should be making critical services both free and accessible. So many organizations across Thunder Bay Atacokan are working on ID issues. Some are the members of the ID Action Group of Thunder Bay. Kinawea Legal Clinic, and the Northwest Community Care Centre, and they all see an urgent need for change. The work they do is so important, and I thank them. I hope my words will resonate with many of you and that you will support my bill. Let's make ID services more accessible to everyone in Ontario. Member Statements. The Member for Guelph. Good morning, Speaker. Uh, yesterday, I tabled a motion that proposes key strategies to addressing the housing affordability crisis that's at a breaking point. My motion calls on the government to immediately begin aggressively investing in affordable rental housing and attainable home ownership options, including but not limited to building 100,000 permanently affordable rental homes extending financial support to 311,000 Ontarians, building 60,000 permanent supportive housing spaces with wraparound mental health and addiction supports, and creating a $100 million fund to support co-op housing providers. These strategies were made in close consultation with housing experts. The burden of addressing home the homeless crisis has fallen onto social service providers. And I'm grateful that Guelph has so many competent and passionate nonprofits that are doing whatever they can to care for the unhoused in our community. Organizations like Stepping Stone, Royal City Mission, Kindle Communities, and Stonehenge Therapeutic. Business leaders in the Guelph Chamber are stepping up to help. Guelph is so lucky to have so many engaged problem solvers, but they need more support, Speaker. So I look forward to working with the Ministries of Mental Health and the Ministry of Housing to bring much needed supportive housing projects to my community and to communities across the province. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements. Member for Bruce Gray, Owen Farm. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I want to acknowledge my intern, Tori Llewellyn, who's in the gallery with some of her colleagues today for writing a statement and hope you'll enjoy. 
Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize an important figure in the great riding of Bruce Gray Olin Sound, Big Bruce. It was love at first sight for local beef farmer Harvey Davis when he first saw the giant steer on a trip to Wisconsin, and he knew he just had to bring it home to Bruce County, the beef capital of Ontario. After almost five years of lobbying, Davis convinced the local Cattlemen's Association to purchase Big Bruce for $6,000. What a deal! Big Bruce then traveled across Ontario in support of local farmers and brought endless smiles to faces along the way, including the 1976 international plowing match in Walkerton. Sadly, in 1980, Mr. Davis passed away after a battle with cancer. However, Big Bruce continues to stand proud in Chesley as a legacy to his vision. Now Big Bruce has a new claim to fame. Over the summer, he took home the title of Ontario's greatest roadside attraction in TVO's The Agenda's 2021 Roadside Attraction Showdown, beating other iconic landmarks like Sudbury's Big Nickel and Kenora's Husky the Musky. Sorry about that, Mr. Rickford. I want to sincerely congratulate the Davis family, the Bruce County Bee Farmers, and the municipality of Aaron Eldersley, formerly Chesley, on this wonderful achievement. Mr. Davis's son, Mark Davis, is currently Aaron Eldersley's, Aaron Eldersley's deputy mayor and continues the strong legacy of his dad for promoting agriculture and strong local government. Big Bruce is not just an iconic landmark, but represents Bruce County's proud agricultural roots and the strength of Ontario's beef industry, which contributes $2.6 billion, $2.69 billion to the province's GDP annually and sustains more than 61,000 jobs. I want to give my sincere thanks to all of our farmers and agri agricultural workers who are the backbone of this province and who helped keep food on our tables during the pandemic. Mr. Speaker, I am proud to recognize the iconic landmark and our province's amazing agricultural industry. I invite everyone to visit the beautiful riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound to see Ontario's greatest roadside attraction, Big Bruce in Chesley, and experience the best beef in the province. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Brampton Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Um, November 25th was International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. And for the next 16 days, uh, community partners across the Peel region will be engaging in 16 days of activism and have launched the Break the Silence campaign to help end violence against women by building awareness in our communities. Women, girls, trans, and non-binary people disproportionately experience violence. United Nations Human Rights Commission estimates that one in three women will experience sexual or physical violence in their lifetime. As Sharon Floyd, the CEO of Embrave, the agency to end violence in Peel, says, and I'll quote, gender-based violence is a serious pervasive problem in our community and continues to have adverse significant impacts on the lives of women, trans, non-binary people and their children. It is important that survivors of violence can bring their whole selves together when they reach out for support. We must all work together to ensure that supports are available when survivors need us the most and that no one is left behind." End quote. Speaker, we also must recognize that um, and honor uh, the missing and murdered Indigenous women, the LGBTQ plus community and two-spirited people and ensure that they have the support and healing for their families. COVID-19 has made it very difficult for women and others in our communities experiencing violence and isolation. And I want to thank the Canadian Women's Foundation for launching uh, the International Signal for Help, Speaker. And I think it's important to share that here in the House so that if anyone is experiencing violence at home, they please use the signal to reach out for help. You need to put your hand up, one thumb down, and put all your fingers together. This is a signal to call out for help, and I encourage everyone to understand the importance of this signal, identify it, and please call for help if you see someone using the signal in your community. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you very much. That concludes our members statements for this morning? No, there's still one more. Okay. I apologize. Member for Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to share my support for the, for the Ontario Legislature Internship Program. For 46 years, OLIP has been providing recent graduates with the opportunity to gain first-hand, in-depth experience working with members on all sides of the Legislature. Chosen by a rigorous application process, the 10 nonpartisan interns spend half their 10 months at Queen's Park working with opposition, opposition members and half the other half with government members. At the same time, they attend regular meetings with former interns, sponsors, and past and current political leaders, conduct study tours to other legislatures, and complete a major academic paper of their own. 
Since being elected in 2001, I've had the privilege to host 16 interns, which I've been told is a record. Each intern has supported the work in my office in substantive ways. OLIP is unique in that the interns interview and choose the MPPs they would like to work with, so I'm honoured to have been selected by all 16 of my interns. I would like to thank them for their hard work, diligence and enthusiasm they brought to my office over the years. I strongly recommend applying to OLIP. I say this not just to recent graduates with an interest in politics and governance, but to future members of this legislature. The program helps us members with our work and certainly provides the next generation of Ontario's leaders with a variety of profound learning opportunities. And I understand the interns are going to be introduced shortly, Mr. Speaker, so thank you for the opportunity to make this statement. And with that, our member statements are concluded for today. I'm very pleased to inform the House that Paige Nathaniel Gardner from the riding of Whitby is today's Page Captain, and we have with us today at Queen's Park his mother, Julie Bisson, and his father, Christopher Gardner. Welcome to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. We're delighted to have you here. All of us in this House support the Ontario Legislative Internship Program. And also in the Speaker's Gallery today, we have some of this year's OLIP interns cohort, and I want to introduce them. Havon Ali, currently placed with the MPP for Humber River Black Creek. Melody Greaves, who is working with the member for Perry Sound Muskoka. Sharika Khan, who works currently with the member for Markham Thornhill. Tori Llewellyn, who is placed in the office of the member for Bruce Gray Owen Sound. <laughs> Ikra Mahmood, currently in the office of the member for Nickel Belt. Claire Simon, who is working with the member for Spadina Fort York. Janine Al Haddadi, who is placed currently with the member for Aurora Oak Ridges Richmond Hill. And Alexander Herbell, who is currently working with the member for Sudbury. We are absolutely delighted to have you with us in the chamber today. Welcome to Queen's Park. Understand the Leader of the Opposition has a point of order she wishes to raise. Speaker, this week Ontario passed a grim milestone with more than 10,000 lives lost to the pandemic. I seek unanimous consent, therefore, for the House to observe a moment of silence for the 24 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 since we last paid tribute to the victims of this deadly virus. Leader of the Opposition is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to observe a moment of silence for the 24 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 since we last paid tribute to the victims of this deadly disease. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Members will please rise. Thank you. Members may take their seats.